Happy Valentine's Day everyone, I hope that you either celebrate today with your loved ones or that you can appreciate the joy and love that others share, don't let being single ruin it for you, this video is part 1 of a Valentine's and White Day special I'm making, for those who don't know, Japan celebrates this holiday a little differently, over there it is up to the women to give Hanmei chocolates to their boyfriends slash husbands or men they want to pursue romantically, and those men would respond one month later on White Day, either accepting their feelings and giving more chocolate than they received, or of course only getting something small or nothing at all if they don't feel the same. This of course is very straight people coded, since Japan isn't quite as accepting of relationships that aren't heterosexual, but don't worry, this story is smothered in gayness as always, and with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the video, it's the week before Valentine's Day during the class's second year at UA, and most of them were excited. The thrill of romance and secret crushes finally having an opportunity to be revealed, they were bustling with anticipation. However of course there were always some people who despised Valentine's Day, those people were usually single. Deku was not one of those people, sure he always got a little shy and nervous around Valentine's Day, each time wondering if maybe this was finally the year someone would express their feelings with that special Hanmei Choco. But every year was a bust, he got chocolates given as a sign of friendship from his classmates for the first time last year. And that was easily his best Valentine's Day to date. But this year, he wanted to make it special. Because Deko had not only never received Hanmei chocolates, he had never given any in the form of a confession either. There was only one person he'd ever wanted to give them to, but there's no way he had the guts for that. He wasn't stupid, he knew his feelings weren't reciprocated so what was the point? But maybe this year he could finally do it. Deku-kun, you coming? Oh, yeah. You were so lost in thought you didn't even hear the bell? Ah, uh, I guess. He's worried about Valentine's Day. Ah, uh, Todoroki-kun I asked you not to say anything. Oh I thought you didn't want me talking about your feelings for. La 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 stop it. Deku-chan has feelings for someone? There's no need to be scared Deku-kun. Valentine's Day is the perfect time to confess. Deku is confessing? Ah, why did we talk about this before everyone had left the classroom? Well the person we're talking about has so what's the problem? Everyone stay where you are? The few students who were making their way out the classroom door froze in place, staring at Mina as she scanned everyone's faces. If they left already, it has to be either, Tokoyami, Shoji, Siro, Kirishima, Kaminari or Bakugo. Momomo and Jiro left the room already too. Deku-kun, they don't count. She placed a hand on his shoulder with an almost pitiful smile, and Deku felt himself burning up in embarrassment. I thought we were studying today, we can't do that stood here can we? Are we allowed to leave now Mina? Oh, yeah, sorry? The rest of the class all filed out the room, Deku trying his best to think about anything other than that embarrassing situation, but he should have known they wouldn't let him do that. How do you plan on confessing Deku-kun? Will you make your own chocolates? I still haven't decided if I even will. I told him he should. I did feel like this year finally felt like the right time. Finally? Gasp, OMG I knew it, it's Bakugo. Dang I had my hopes it would be Shoji, wouldn't they be cute? Hmm I see that. Deku likes it when people are mean to him, Shoji could never. That's not true. I, oh my god you guys are making me want to lock myself in my room and never be seen in public again. If you've had feelings for him for a very long time, it would be good to get it off your chest Deku-chan. Well that is what I was thinking, but it's so, terrifying. I'll bet, but hey what's the worst that could happen really? The worst? Bakugo could totally kill him. No he couldn't. Are you crazy? Bakugo would be lost without Deku-kun. Well, well I dunno about lost but, she's right. He could never live without you he's so obsessed with you it's almost embarrassing to be honest. That's true, so the worst that could happen is he does his usual I have no feelings other than rage and then pretends he doesn't feel the same as you like an idiot. You're crazy, I'm sure Ka-chan doesn't like me back, but even so, it's been so long I know I have no shot of ever moving on if I never confess. If he rejects you you think you'll be able to move on? Well, eventually, maybe, probably not. Ah Deku-kun. Good thing there's a massive chance he likes you back then, hmm? Hey we can help you make the chocolates if you'd like, right guys? I was just going to buy some. Making them yourself shows how serious you are about your confession, if you're going to do it, wouldn't it be better to do it like you really mean it? I guess, okay, 
Thank you guys, even though you totally embarrassed me at first. Hey, wait, be quiet. Mina suddenly hushed them all as they neared the dorms, standing behind the wall and peering at a conversation. Oh come on man you can't possibly hate everything. Obviously not shitty hair but I do hate this dumb fucking holiday. Kachan hates Valentine's Day? But why? It's literally just celebrating love, how could you hate that? Because it's bullshit, if you like someone and you wanna confess, why wait for one dumb day, it all feels so artificial and forced, who cares about getting shitty chocolate on a random shitty day? You've never got Valentine's chocolates have you? Huh? Why is that relevant? Of course he has zero come on dude he's Bakugo, surely in middle school people were lining up to confess. What's that supposed to mean, you like Bakugo? What? The group of sneaking students suddenly panicked and ducked behind the wall as the boys turned to look toward Toru's surprised yell. That was weird. You're weird, you have a crush on me dumbass? No? Geez I'm not allowed to platonically say that my hot friend must be popular romantically? It just sounded like you like him. There's no way that idiot likes Bakugo, don't worry Deku, he's totally been crushing on Kirishima lately, probably only said it to make him jealous, and look it worked. Why are we still stood here weren't we gonna change and go train? Yes, let's stop talking about the stupid holiday and fucking go. The group of boys headed into the dorms and Deco slid down to sit on the floor against the wall with a huff. He hates Valentine's Day. He hates everything, so what? He sounded so disgusted, he said it was artificial and forced, how could I possibly give him confession chocolates now? Hmm, that does really suck, sorry Deco kun Why not give them anonymously? What good would that do? He would just get free chocolate for nothing, doesn't seem fair. Besides the whole point was to finally get my feelings off my chest. Wait, I have a genius idea. Mina suddenly stood and started rushing toward the dorms, making the others all look to each other in confusion before hurrying after her. Mina where are you going? Inside, we can't discuss out here, I mean we lurked on their conversation right? Who knows who could hear us, come listen to my idea? They all followed her up to her dorm, ignoring the questioning eyes from Ida as they piled inside. Okay, look, what if you did give the chocolates anonymously? That's your genius idea? Tsu already said that. No no wait. The genius idea is that you would make one chocolate for every day until white day, and each chocolate would have a cute note inside about all the things you like about Bakugo. So now he gets chocolates and compliments, for a whole month? He must have been a saint in a past life or something. That still wouldn't solve Deka's problem of getting closure on his feelings though Mina. That's the thing, as it gets closer to White Day, you could make the notes more obvious, more personal to you guys, I'm sure you have a bunch of sweet memories you could hint at right? Oh, so by the end he would know it was me? That's, a good idea? But still terrifying. You could ask him to meet you at the dorm's cherry blossom on White Day if he feels the same. That would be so cute omg. But if he does figure out it's me and then doesn't feel the same, I'll just be stood at the tree like a loser waiting to see if he'll show up. If he doesn't show up then he'd be an idiot. Oh come on you guys we all know he's going to show up. You're way too confident, even though I really doubt that, I still think this is the best option I've got, so thanks Mina. Quick question, are we even capable of making that many homemade chocolates? We don't have to do anything fancy, just melt some chocolate and find some cute molds to put it all into harden again. I think I still have my heart molds from last year's Valentine's Day. Well yeah those are super cute. Thank you, those would be great. If I could borrow them then I could probably do this myself. Ah but we wanna help. But now that I know I've gotta write little notes, I think I'd rather do that alone. Oh, I see. I can help you melt and harden the chocolate quickly with my quirk, you should let me help. Um, okay you can help. No fair? I'll bring the heart molds to your dorm Deku-chan. Thanks Tsu and thanks Mina for the idea. He bowed his head before standing to leave the dorm, ignoring how Mina was pouting as Todoroki smugly grinned and followed behind him. I need to buy some chocolate bars to melt. I'll wait at your dorm and get the molds from Ajui-san. Thank you, oh, did you want me to get you anything? Hmm, for what? Don't you have plans for Valentine's Day? No, I might have bought some friendship chocolates for you if you weren't doing all this for Bakugo, but I don't think I'll celebrate this year. I'll get you some just in case, I know you have a crush stupid. Eh? But Deku had already left. The freckled boy woke up even earlier than usual on Valentine's Day, 
He knew he needed to get to class before everyone else if he wanted to leave Bakugo's chocolates for him anonymously. He rushed to class with the box that he had decorated with a bright red ribbon, leaving it on Bakugo's desk before rushing right back out and into the nearest bathroom in hopes nobody would see him. Deep breaths is Suku, he'll have no idea it's you, at least not right away, this will be good, finally not being a coward. He splashed his face with water before hearing the bustle of some of his classmates. He waited until they'd gone past before sneaking out behind them to inconspicuously enter the classroom. Good morning Midoriya, morning Ida-kun, happy Valentine's deck kun Ah, thanks, where's Tsu? I set her alarm a little later so I'd get here before her. That's dedication right there. Says you, where's Kirishima right now huh? Heh, I left sticky love notes all over his door, he's probably got such a cute blush all over his face as he frantically tears them all down right now. You're confessing to Kirishima-kun? Duh, I've got his Hanmei Choko right here. Whoa wait, isn't that Bakugo's desk? Oh shit dude you're right, who are they from? The two boys rushed over to his desk and picked up Deku's homemade box, not noticing how the boy's eyes widened in panic. There's no name. Who was first in the classroom? Me and Ida got here first but that was already there. What was where? Oh, I see, never mind. Todoroki entered the classroom and before the boys could question if he knew something, he headed straight toward them and pulled a small box of chocolates out of his bag, handing them to Siro with a slight blush. Eh, for me? Yeah, I um, have liked you for a little while now. Siro was completely speechless, flushing red as Kaminari gawked beside him, until he reached round into his own bag and pulled a similar sized box of special chocolates out, looking to Todoroki and blinking. Oh. I see, I'm sorry. No no I got these for you, you did. Congrats bro, I'm so happy for you Todoroki-kun, aren't you supposed to wait for White Day to respond? That's the tradition, because it's girls give to boys first. Which is a dumb tradition? You gays are cute as heck. Woo I see Bakugo's chocolates made it safely where they were supposed to. You left these here? What no? I just knew they would be there. Oh Chako-chan, you almost made me late. Sorry Tsu, here. I just needed a little extra time to make sure this was perfect for you. She smiled giddily and handed her girlfriend a few bags filled with chocolates and small gifts. This is too much. No such thing when it comes to you. You two are so fucking cute, women are so cute. Kakami, we need to talk. Oh you're here, that we do Mia more. What the heck has gotten into you? Kami abandoned Bakugo's chocolates to instead rush to hold Kirishima's hands making Deku let out a breath of relief as his anonymous gift was left alone. I'm so not ready for this shit show. A gift for you on Valentine's my love. Kami handed Kirishima a fancy looking box of well-decorated Hanmei Choko, gleefully grinning as the flustered boy flushed the same color as his hair. Are you serious? Of course I am, I promise, there's no joke here. You don't have to respond right away of course, you have a whole month to take it in. He's serious? Yes, yes he is. Congrats Kirishima-kun, Kaminari-kun, thanks, you guys know me, as soon as I realized I had feelings I wasn't gonna do this shit half-hearted. I don't know what to say, you don't have to say anything, I'll prove it to you, I have a month to show you I mean business. Oh thank god, I missed his confession right? It was rather moving actually. What the fuck is that? His eyes locked onto the box on his desk, Deku's heart tripling in speed at his angry expression as he stormed toward it. Okay who the fuck put these here? There's no label, I think it's one of those secret admirer gifts. Or one of you idiots playing a dumb prank on me and if that's the case then, Jesus Bakugo just sit and enjoy your chocolates. He froze and Deku had to hold back his laughter as he watched Bakugo's eye twitch in annoyance, before he huffed and slumped into his chair. Deku peered over Bakugo's shoulder nervously as he opened the box, pausing to read the note on top telling him to only eat one per day. Cha, this is not how this usually works. He grumbled and Deku gulped nervously, suddenly worrying that maybe he would ignore the instructions entirely. How did I not think of that? That's totally a Kachan thing to do, he doesn't take orders. But to his surprise, he watched as Bakugo shyly picked out the first chocolate and unwrapped it, pausing to read the note. You have beautiful eyes. Deku panicked again, this was it. The moment where he would find out if Bakugo thought the gift was stupid and throw the whole thing away or if he would accept it. He held his breath in anticipation, until he noticed Bakugo's ears going red from behind, before he clicked his tongue and scrunched the paper up, 
dropping it into the box and popping the first chocolate into his mouth. He accepted it. He, oh God. The brief spark of excitement within Deco was quickly drowned out by the realization that now there was no going back. Over the next month the boy he'd been in love with his whole life would finally know. And that was terrifying. Hey Jiro did you not get any chocolates for yo Momo? You guys know we don't celebrate this holiday like that. We'll just binge eat chocolate while watching a movie tonight or something, right babe? Um, mm, there's too much pressure with the whole, I give this person a gift and then in a month they have to return it, plus the gender roles are so old fashioned. Finally someone gets it, this stupid day is so. Well now hang on, I would at least appreciate a box of homemade chocolates like that? Clearly someone put their heart and soul into it and you're just being a dick by sitting there all mad about it. Uh -huh. I'm not, I, it's not like I asked for the stupid chocolate. But, sigh, thank you whichever of you idiots did this. He thanked me, I knew he would like them deep down. Morning, I understand today is special for some of you but please can we all sit in our seats and put your chocolates away. Happy Valentine's Sensei, I, uh, thank you. The girls giggled as their teacher went a little rosy-cheeked, before he cleared his throat and the lesson began. A week had gone by and each day was ordinary, go to class, study with his friends, train, go to bed and do the whole thing again, until the class were given a week for patrol experience, in groups of course. You sure you're not cold? Nah even though it's winter my chest never really gets cold. Hmm, bonus for me then, my favorite view is there all year round. Oh my god you never stop. It's insufferable. Just cause you have a black hole where your heart should be. Try flirting with someone for once. It's fun you know. No thank you. You expect me to just stop a random person on the street and hit on them? No. Deku's right there man. Ah. Uh, I I am not involved in this. Bakugo turned to look at Deku and then back to his annoying friend. Did you hit your head lately? Or should I do it for you? Kaminari squealed and ran to the other side of Kirishima, clinging to his arm dramatically as he continued smothering him with compliments. Bakugo huffed but slowed his walk so he was beside Deku in the back, making the shorter boy's heart race as he tried not to just turn and stare at him. They're so annoying, right? Oh, um, I don't think it's so bad. Cha, of course you don't. You don't find anything annoying do you? Hmm, I don't think that's true. Oh yeah? Give me an example then. Pencils are annoying. Deku spoke confidently with a nod, until he looked into Bakugo's eyes to see the boy's utterly blank stare, like a walking sigh of disappointment. It's annoying to sharpen them all the time you know, but everyone thinks that's annoying, of course it's annoying, there's gotta be something more specific. Alright let me think, I mean I find it annoying when people assume I'm weak just because I'm kinda small. Ah, uh, you've got it all wrong, people don't think you're weak cause you're small, they think you're weak because you are. The playful tone in his voice had Deku blushing, despite his answer still being another insult as usual. Come on Kachan you know that's not true. Hmm, maybe, who's to say, I haven't fought you in a while. We're on patrol, not here to fight each other. Yeah yeah, we'll save that for another day. Alright, oh um, did you enjoy those chocolates? Huh, valentines? Yeah, you seemed a little annoyed about it last week but, surely you still ate them right? It's free chocolate? Well. They're weird, the box says I can only eat one per day, they're nice, but um, there's a note in each chocolate too. Oh, what kind of note? Like, compliments and shit, stuff like, you're so much smarter than you let people think, or this one that said, I wish you would wrap your strong arms around me and make me feel safe. Deku felt himself blushing as the boy he loved read his secret notes right back to his face, they sounded a lot more embarrassing out loud. Um, that's sweet, right? Cha, I dunno? It sounds like whoever it is just has the hots for how I look, almost all the notes are about my appearance. Eh, but that's not true, you just have to read more Kachan, oh god how do I defend myself without sounding suspicious? Well well maybe whoever it is just thought they would write the more obvious stuff first? You've only read about a week of notes right? There's three weeks left, so maybe they'll get more meaningful with time? The blonde boy looked at him strangely, before frowning with a sigh and chewing his lips in thought. Maybe you're right, it's crazy someone even has that many nice things to say about me. Deku looked across to him shyly, feeling giddy inside seeing Bakugo's subtle smile and rosy cheeks, he was proud that he could make him feel good. Hehe, he, and you said you hated Valentine's Day. I still think it's stupid, but, I dunno, whoever gave me those stupid chocolates made this year pretty nice at least. 
Wu Kachan has a crush on someone he doesn't even know. No I don't idiot. I do wish I knew who it was though. First I would call them stupid for even celebrating the dumb holiday, then an annoying coward for doing this shit anonymously instead of just saying it to my face. But then I guess I would thank them, and probably have to tell them I don't reciprocate their feelings. I've never had a relationship like that. I wouldn't even know what to do. How are you supposed to act in a relationship? Well I for one would smother my boyfriend in love but still give him his space when needed of course, boundaries are important, as long as he knows he's loved, like spoiling him with all his favorite things and taking him to all his favorite places. I get it alright, you're cute. I'll be so much cuter when we date. If, not when. Sure, totally. Ma maybe the person did it anonymously because they know that about you Ka-chan, that you wouldn't feel the same, so to save you both the awkwardness they made it less obvious. You know, you seem to know a lot about how this secret person might be thinking. Did you see who put the chocolates on my desk? You always get to class early surely you saw something? Eh, no no I didn't. Liar, you know who it is don't you? It's not my place to say. Maybe you'll figure it out from the notes. You could at least give a hint or something like. Dude you should just drop it. I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually. Chop, whatever. Two more weeks pass. Bakugo had been eating his chocolates and reading the notes every morning, and he had gained some suspicions for who might have left them for him. Today you will be completing a series of tasks in pairs, please turn to someone around you to make your pair. Someone around me? So my options are the invisible girl, the most intimidating girl, or, fucking Deku. Hey Midoriya, we should be a pair right? Fuck he's my best option. The boy panicked and immediately did a 180 turn in his chair, reaching out to grab Deku's wrist as he was turning to face Minita. Back off grape shit he's in my pair. Kaka-chan? Really? Bakugo only stared into his eyes with a stern frown, making Deku's cheeks flush pink as he turned to look at Minita apologetically. Sorry. As he turned back around Bakugo noticed his eyes locked onto his hand that was still grasping the boy's wrist, so he panicked and let go with a huff, facing forward. Your first task is to write three things you admire about your partner. Huh? That's bullshit why didn't you tell us that before, and why do we even have to do something like that? As classmates and heroes in training you should be able to pinpoint the best qualities in the people you work with, understanding the ways you can improve yourself by being inspired by those around you. That's stupid. He pouted but looked down to his paper anyway, sighing and twiddling his pen as he let his mind fill with Deku. Of course I have to do this about him, the fucking note this morning. Even when you're yelling at me I know you care. Sure I yell at everyone but Deku is the only one stupid enough to say something like that. But there's no way it's him. I've been awful to him our whole lives. I would have to be a real narcissist to think he could ever like me like that. He clenched his jaw in annoyance, but the more he thought, he ended up subconsciously writing down the first thing he thought of. Isuku is so forgiving and always sees the best in people. As soon as his pen left the paper his cheeks flushed pink. It felt so wrong to write compliments about someone, but he accepted that he had to, so sighed and kept writing. He's hardworking and determined to get better at whatever he can do. His kind smile always makes everyone feel safe and comfortable. He started to subconsciously smile as he read over his paper, until Izawa took it from his desk and he snapped back to reality, realizing that he was going around swapping them between their pairs. Hey wait I didn't know anyone would see it. Of course you were going to share with your partner, just be quiet and read yours. Fuck, he's going to read those nice things I wrote about him, he'll obviously think it's weird I never say nice things about him. He probably had nothing to write about me either so. His thoughts trailed off as he looked down at what Deku had written. Ka-chan gives his all into fighting and never gives up on anyone. He's incredibly smart and a great leader, coming up with strategic plans that are sure to make the most of everyone's abilities. Even though he yells at everyone, it's clear that deep down he cares about us all. His eyes widened as he repeatedly scanned over that last line, it was almost identical to the note in his chocolate that morning. Is that just a coincidence? Maybe it really is clear to everyone, which means they could be from anyone? Do they really all know that I care even when I'm yelling? OMG Kiri thinks I'm literally the cutest person ever? That's not what I said. I was putting it nicely so I don't embarrass you but if you wanna get hung up on details, then you literally said that whenever I'm around it makes everyone's day brighter with just a smile, how adorably cheesy is that? Dude, I'm ashamed. Seriously? Hey Midoriya, what did Bakugo, oh, 
He trailed off and the blonde boy frowned as everyone turned to look at Deku in concern. Deku-kun, are you okay? He panicked and immediately turned to face the boy behind him, his heart dropping when he saw the tears trailing down his cheeks. Did you write something horrible? Well what no? I don't know why he's crying I swear I didn't. Sniff, sorry, I'm just being silly. It's just that what Ka-chan wrote was really unexpected and sweet, I must have started crying without even realizing. Bakugo's cheeks burned bright red with embarrassment as he frantically turned around again, completely avoiding eye contact with the whole class. Ah he really wrote nice things? What did he write? Quiet down please, the papers stay between you and your partner, your next task is to work in your pairs on a scavenger hunt for an item you'll pull from this hat. Shit, now I have to be alone with him? After that, he was trying to steady his heart rate as everyone got up to take a slip of paper from the hat, when he collected theirs and opened it he looked to Deku with a sigh. What is it Kachan? A fucking acorn, we're gonna have to literally scavenge on the ground like stupid little squirrels. Deku laughed a little as he followed Bakugo out the classroom, making the blonde boy's whole body tense up in momentary panic. It'll be fun. Fuck what's wrong with me. They walked pretty much silently until they reached a nearby park, away from everyone else, just the two of them. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for those things you wrote. You know we really don't have to talk about that. I know, I just wanted to say it really meant a lot to me. Well, I was just being honest, I know I'd be a better person if I had those qualities you do. Well I'm definitely hard working but the other ones you know? Hmm, maybe you'd become a little more personable, but then you wouldn't be you. People are great because of our unique strengths. You're great how you are Kachan. I really thought you'd have nothing to write for me. What? Have you forgotten how much I admire you? I guess. Everything you do is super cool Kachan. I could have written way more than three things. How many? Uh, well, a lot, I dunno. Like say, ten times that amount? Well, what are you getting at Kachan? Bakugo could hardly hold back his laugh at how terrified the freckled boy suddenly looked. Even if the chocolates weren't from him, it was fun to tease him. Oh hey, an acorn? What, you actually found one? Yeah that was fast right? Was this a competition? Hmm, I don't think so why? I don't wanna go back to class already if we don't have to, that's boring, this is the perfect opportunity to just do whatever we want. Kachan we shouldn't skip school, we'll get in trouble. It's not skipping if they think we're on a scavenger hunt. I'll destroy all the acorns I find if you're gonna be like this. Eh? Whoa well, well, sigh, what do you wanna do then? Bakugo smiled smugly, choosing not to answer and instead walk onto the grass to sit down. Ah, it's a good day to exist. He sighed blissfully and flopped back to lie on the grass, staring up at the sky and breathing in the air. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing stupid? Um, just lying on the floor. Exactly? So stop standing there like you have a stick up your ass and lie with me. But but why? Why not? Lying on the ground is so nice, you're allowed to relax you know. He rolled his eyes before closing them and enjoying the warm sun on his face, until he heard Deku sigh and shuffle over to lie beside him on the grass. See, isn't it nice? I don't know, what am I supposed to do? You're not supposed to do anything, that's the whole point. Stop thinking about school or villains or getting stronger, just take a breather. Do you do this a lot? No, I haven't in ages, there's been no time. Hmm, you're right, it is nice. He opened his eyes again and turned to look at the boy lying beside him, studying his face as he breathed deeply, truly relaxed for the first time, ever. I've never seen him like this, he's always so stressed about being ready to help, never just switching off. He was completely entranced, scanning over his serene features. Eyelashes curled sweetly away from his cheeks littered with delicate freckles, down to his plump lips, glistening under the sun. He's so pretty, I hate that he's so pretty. He continued to stare until Deku's eyes blinked open, turning to meet Bakugo's in shock as both of them blushed. Are you okay? Ah, uh, um, yeah, you seemed actually relaxed for once, it was surprising. Oh, I honestly think I could fall asleep like that. Hmm, that's probably not a good idea right now though. He sat up again and brushed a hand through his hair, looking back to Deku as he smiled so peacefully. If the chocolates actually were from him, what would that mean? What would I do? Ka-chan, did you want to go get coffee or something before we go back to class? Huh, you're asking me to skip even more school? Hey you said it wasn't really skipping? Oh, yeah, totally, let's go. 
He hopped up from the ground and walked back to the path with Dekka scrambling frantically behind him. Wait but should we just go back instead? Nope you suggested it already no take backs. He grinned and kept walking, subconsciously slowing down so Deco could catch up and walk beside him. What if everyone else is back already? It's fine, it's not like they can accuse us of lying about taking longer. Deco sighed but stopped arguing, walking side by side, until their hands brushed together between them and Bakugo's heart leapt into his throat as he snatched his hand up to his chest. Ah, sorry. Ahem, it's alright. He clenched his fist and cleared his throat, having an internal battle over how he wanted nothing more than to reach down and hold Deka's hand. But he fought the urges until they made it to the nearby cafe, stepping foot inside, scanning for a table, and freezing at the sight they saw. Hmm it's yummy right? Um hmm. You're so cute. Bakugo gawked in utter disgust at his best friends sitting in the back corner of the cafe, holding hands across the table and sharing a drink with two straws. Um, we could order our drinks to go? Yes, please. Excuse me, can we get two frappuccinos to go? One caramel cream and one chai cream please? Eh, how did you know what I wanted? It's the spiciest variant of frappuccino they make here, of course it's your favorite. They waited for their drinks, trying to avoid looking in the direction of the overly affectionate couple in the corner. Even hearing Kaminari gushing was too much. Your smile is so pretty, I could stare at you for eternity. I don't think I'll ever get used to your compliments. Good, I don't ever want that adorable blush of yours to go away. Bakugo had never wished to tear his own ears off more than that moment, but finally their drinks were ready and the pair rushed back out the cafe, sipping on their frappuccinos in silence. Ahem, is yours nice? Yup, yours? Um hmm. The silence returned until Deka started sputtering out little laughs, and Bakugo couldn't hold back his own anymore either. They laughed and laughed until they couldn't keep walking, Bakugo turning to lean his back onto a wall as Deko pressed his head against it trying to catch his breath. What even was that? Oh my god they're on a whole new level of down bad. I can't believe we had to listen to that. Those two follow me around everywhere? Siro is all I have left. But even he's with Icy Hot now so who knows when he'll turn to the dark side of insufferable cringe. Pfft, worst case scenario you're stuck with me. Oh, well, that's not so bad. As long as you stay like this? Like what? Not pulling your goody two shoes shit, letting me skip class cause we can. Hmm, well I appreciate you spending time with me and treating me like a friend. Skipping school is worth it for a good time like this. Cha, why'd you have to make it sound all mushy for? You sound like dunce face. Ah uh, sorry? Ahem I'll just shut up. Pfft, I've had a good time too. I'm glad I fought with that pervy sure task to have you in my pair for today, but we probably should head back now. Yes, good idea. Shit. What? I dropped the acorn somewhere. Kachan? End of part 1. Before you yell at me, it needed to end here I need to stop making my videos so long, it's already long but if I wrote the next chunk I wanted to before stopping part 1, omg it would have been like an hour long, so it has to stop here. But that means part 2 is gonna be super fucking cute and you all better subscribe with notifications on to see it ya here? Part 2 is gonna have hot spicy stuff, that'll make you come back. Any gays thanks for watching please don't yell at me I'll try get part 2 done ASAP maybe it'll be done in a week who knows? Love y'all bye.